What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Steelers Breakdown Podcast. Nick Farabaugh here, as always. And today on this Wednesday, let's start talking Steelers-Falcons. We talked a little bit about it yesterday on the podcast, um, just previewing what Mike Tomlin said uh, at his usual Tomlin Tuesday presser. Um, but today I want to talk a little bit about some specific matchups, um, some matchups to watch. Two specific ones I want to watch on the offensive side of the ball and one I want to watch on the defensive side of the ball. And so, you know, you look at this game, the Steelers game against the Falcons, and kind of look at the matchups that it will be based on. And, I mean, you have to be a little concerned, honestly. Uh, There are some matchups to me that stick out like a sore thumb in favor of the Falcons. And I just can't find similar ones for the Steelers. I don't think there's a ton of them for Pittsburgh. And I think that's concerning uh, if you are the Steelers. For one, let's talk about the one that, the the two really actually, honestly, um, that I would say is the biggest, biggest one. Uh, So, Spencer Anderson against Grady Jarrett. We're going to talk about this a lot all week. You know, now you can even throw Zach Frazier in there because Jarrett will go up against both these guys. Um, but these are really important matchups for the Steelers. Uh, that that matchup is going to be a huge one. Because here's the thing. I think they're going to try and run in the middle. I think they're going to try and get downhill, run a lot of duo, run a lot of different stuff like that, and really try – to get after them a little bit. Um, And listen, I don't blame them for trying to get after them up the middle. I think it's a smart strategy if you were the Steelers because I I think that's where they're going to be able to create some sustainability in the run game and some efficiency in the run game. And so that's going to be a big part of what the Steelers want to do. Um, But Spencer Anderson is just an odd matchup against them. Um, He really is because you kind of look at it from his point of view, and he's six foot five, and you know, Jared's six foot and very twitchy and explosive off the line of scrimmage. So, you really have to be very technically sound against him. If they run twists, and they will run different types of twists and fronts to try and get those guys loose, you also have to be very disciplined uh, against the different fronts that they use. So, that's going to be a huge match. I, if I were them personally, if, if I were just Raheem Morris. And the Falcons, I mean, I'd let Grady Jarrett just go eat. It's a smart strategy. Just let him go eat. Uh, And I think that is really a smart move um, for the Falcons. And then same thing for Matt Judon, you know. Really, wherever this tackle situation is for the Steelers, and we still don't know who will start tackle, I'm expecting right now for it to be Broderick Jones at right and Dan Moore at left just because I think they're going to want to give someone like Troy Falatanu a little more time. And when you look at Falatanu, you know, he looks really solid, but is he ready to play? Is he fully ready to go out there and play right now? I'm not so sure of that. And so... I think you're going to have those two. And Judon is interesting because he's a vet, obviously, that can rush from both sides, uh, can win outside or inside, speed or power. He is a real menace for the Steelers uh, because he's going to exploit them wherever they are weak. And, you know, the, the other guy in that rotation, whether that's going to be Lorenzo Carter or Arnold Abichetti, whoever it will be, um, is not going to be nearly as scary as someone like Matt to Judon, who is going to be a real pain to handle, I think, for the Steelers, whoever is blocking him. Um, he's just such a savvy player. And he's really going to give him some issues. They can put him over the middle, too. Uh, they can really do some fun things with that guy. Um, so y- you look at those two up front, Jarrett and Judon, and those two really feel like the big matchups for the Steelers on offense. Um, you know, outside – I mean, you can look at the weapons for the Steelers, but really it's all going to be dictated by how that offensive line plays. 
I, I think that's going to be the first thing that they're going to have to get right. And so if they can block well for Russell Wilson and, and get efficient runs against this Falcons front, they'll be okay. You remember last year when the Steelers faced the Rams, for example, they were able to do that. They were able to get uh, some real gains uh, on the ground, and then it led to some explosive plays through the air at times. Um, and that's really where I think you come down on this, too. Uh, that's where it's all going to have to work through. And then maybe, you know, if you're on the ball, then you can hit a deep play to George Pickens, or you can get someone like Pat Fryer move three. All, all of that is going to come into the equation here when we are talking about blocking Grady Jarrett and Matthew Judon. And, you know, you're going to need time because this is a really good secondary behind them. Uh, you know, when you have Justin Simmons, Jesse Bates, and A.J. Terrell out there as three of the five that are going to be in there in your nickel package, that's a really strong five. It's a really good secondary. It's a ball hawking secondary too. So Russell Wilson has to be careful as well when you're dealing with those. I think on the opposite side of that coin, I think you really look at one matchup in particular, and I'm going to point to Kyle Pitts against who I believe is going to face him, and that will be Deshaun Elliott. You know, Deshaun Elliott has been the Steelers' de facto tight end eraser at points this summer. He's gone to battle with Pat Frymuth for most of the summer. Listen, Kyle Pitts is 6'6", runs a 4'4", and even if he's dealing with a little tight hamstring right now, is absolutely a dangerous weapon to be reckoned with. That is going to be a huge matchup. Now, you know, you got Joey Porter Jr. and Dante Jackson against Drake London and all this, but stopping Kyle Pitts is going to be so huge for the Steelers because I remember, you know, seeing in the joint practice with the Bills, and it really hasn't shown up as much in games because they just haven't really faced tight end yet um, that will torch them like that. But I remember Dalton Kincaid just going off in that practice. Uh, and I remember last year where, you know, the, the – Guys like Trey McBride, and Hunter Henry, and others had huge games um, for their teams at tight ends against the Steelers. So I think, you know, Pitts is a guy, he's going to now be two years out of that major knee surgery. At times he didn't look fully right last year. Um, maybe this year, you know, you, you would feel better, at least personally I would, if I were the Falcons. I would feel better about Pitts' health and where he can be at now. And, and so you want to use him. In any way possible, you want to use Kyle Pitts and get him one-on-one. -on -one. You want to get him in the red zone and throw it up to him and, you know, get those mismatches. And Deshaun Elliott's going to be the guy that's going to actually be the answer more than likely. Uh, and so, yeah, Deshaun Elliott is a really fun player to watch. Um, and, and more importantly, Deshaun Elliott is also that type of player that isn't scared of anything. Um, but his man coverage skills and safety are going to be really tested this week. And so, you know, you, you kind of got to wonder uh, where, you know, they're going to, if they're going to help Elliott, how they're going to funnel Kyle Pitts, because Pitts is going to be a significant, a significant boom. Uh, to that that Falcons offense. It, he just is. He's he's a huge part of what makes the thing churn. And Deshaun Elliott's a guy that has history as a man coverage guy that has played well. And so, yeah, it's, it's not completely out of the realm of possibility to me that Deshaun Elliott can make a few really nice plays in this game and allow the Steelers to maybe keep Pitts in – and kind of check. You just, you know, he's probably going to eat. Uh, him and London are probably going to get their their due. So, so will be John Robinson, right? But you can't let any of them take over the game. And I think that's where you come in on these guys. And so Deshaun A against Kyle Pitts is a really interesting matchup. Uh, and then, you know, I would assume you're going to see Joey Porter Jr. shadow Drake London, um, which is going to be a big part of this. You know, big-bodied guys against Joey Porter Jr. have been a mixed bag at times. He's shut some of them down, you know, like guys like DeAndre Hopkins where he really did well 
And then there have been guys like DK Metcalf that have been able to overpower him a little bit. Um, but, you know, he's bigger this year. He's had a little bit of muscle. And I'm interested to see how that actually shows up against a 6'4 guy like Drake London. He's a really fun player. Um, and, you know, he he's pretty quick in and out of his breaks for his size. Uh, and I think almost 1,000 receiving yards last year. I think he's going to get it this year. He is the guy in their passing offense. It's him and Pitts in that passing offense uh, for them. And he's going to be a high-volume target. Uh, and Kirk Cousins is going to be really able, to, I think, to air it out to those guys. So you're going to have to limit them. You know, they'll they'll get theirs. They'll get some plays. Uh, you just got to make sure that you don't let any of them take over the game. And so we'll see kind of how that all shows up. But more importantly, I think the Steelers have to protect Russell Wilson. I think this is going to be one as most as, – I think more than anywhere – along the Steelers' offensive line. That is the most important matchup to me in this game. If they can protect Russell Wilson and at least hold up and not get him killed, I think you have a chance here in this game. All right, everybody, make sure to check out more stuff on Penn Line. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell here on the YouTube channel. If you are listening to this on a podcasting platform, Make sure to leave a review. Also, make sure to sign up for our new Steelers subtext. It is going to be an exclusive place where you can get analysis, talk with me about anything you want, have questions for me, send them to me. It's all good. You can send it over, and you can sign up by texting STEELERS to 412-547-8882. So make sure to check that out as well. Link is in the description for that. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Be back tomorrow.